and we are officially live. Instagram is letting everyone know that we're live. So we'll wait a few moments here and let Instagram do its job and let you guys know what we've got going on tonight. So excited. It's going to be so good. And now for the awkward pause as I wait for Instagram to grab our audience and get this party started. <laughs> hey, looks like Brenda has joined us. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add her into the video. All right, it should be working. I think Brenda is connecting. Hey! <laughs> Hi there! How are you doing? Awesome. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Super excited <laughs> about tonight. Yes, me too. Okay, can you hear me okay? Is the audio and everything good? I, I hear you good. Awesome. I'm going to okay. put up my volume a little bit. Perfect. Oh, I'm so excited about tonight. This is going to be so fun. <laughs> Me too. I miss, I miss chatting with you more often, so this is really cool. <laughs> yeah, so good. Yeah. Okay, well, tonight we have a special event here on Instagram. It is called Bought with a Price. And so I was so excited. Brenda and I started talking about this idea, um, I guess it was probably a couple of weeks ago, and um, just talking about the best way to introduce those of you who don't know, to, um, to introduce you guys to Brenda because she's one of my favorite people. I love her, her story. She's so inspiring. So you guys are going to love getting to know Brenda tonight. And if you already know Brenda, that's awesome too because I know some of her people are jumping on. So welcome to all of you. My name is Libby Yay. Lynn for those of you who don't know. Um, I run Crown of Beauty Magazine. I'm an author, singer, songwriter, kind of have my hands in a lot of different projects, entrepreneur, and um just so excited about what we're going to be discussing tonight. So with that being said, I have some pre-prepared interview questions for Brenda, but I also want you guys to ask questions as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them at us, shoot them at her. Um, she'll be more than happy to answer them. So I guess the first question, well, I guess before we dive into questions, I should probably talk about how we first connected because this is one of my favorite stories. I've I just love how God wove us together and um, all of that because we were actually going to the same church. We were going to Northview in North Carolina. Shout and out to Northview. Woohoo! Woo yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because I was in youth group with your daughter, and so I was friends with her and connected with her, but I, you were just kind of around. Like, we didn't really talk that much <laughs> when I was younger. And so I remember the first time that we connected – is when we were planning um, the very first Crown of Beauty Magazine conference. Yes. And so that was super fun because you are a woman of many talents, and I had no idea that you had this knack for <laughs> putting together events. And um, it was just such a blessing to be able to share my vision with you and um, just see how you brought it all together. It was like, it was amazing. So I, that is how we first got connected, and I love that that's how our story started. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. So awesome. Um, yeah, that was so fun. And so starting off, first of all, thank you so much for asking me to partner with you tonight on this event. Um, I've been really praying into um, everyone that is has a heart to connect tonight, that the, the Holy Spirit is going to minister um, through this time as we share our hearts. Um, mm -hmm. And also, like, I feel super, like, honored and privileged to for you to ask me to do this with you because obviously, um, you know, you could have asked anyone. And so I just appreciate, you know, how we've connected and how um, the Lord has like kind of interwoven our paths um, over time. It's just, you know, really beautiful. Um, and I'm just glad that regardless of where you are, um, we have stayed connected. And so, cause I just find you to be just an extraordinary young lady, super gifted as well, uh, music, writing, um, just so like, you know, amazing, amazing talents across the board. So I'm super excited about what God has done through you, but also like what he's doing now and also what he's, where he's taking you. Like there's so yeah. much that's going to happen through you. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm just super honored to, to be able to see it all. <laughs> Aww. Well, I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of an overview of our story, how we first got connected. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just thought it'd be fun tonight to kind of dive into well, I have a couple of things that 
are on my heart, but one of those being, maybe let's start more at the beginning of your story, because you are a very creative person. You have a lot of creative giftings and talents. Not only are you amazing at putting together events, um, but you're also a writer, and your artwork is just beautiful, and you have, like, all these secret hidden talents. And so that artistic creative side, when did that first start coming out in you? Is that when you were a younger, like, little girl, or was that not till you got older? Or tell us a little bit about that. Um... Definitely as I was younger, I have um, amazing parents that um, my dad, um, his career was kind of um, actually centered around um, art and drawing. He was a draftsman. Um, he kind of did our um, AutoCAD, if anybody's familiar with that. But he was a draftsman, had, had a beautiful um, drafting table um, that he would, he had his own space where he had all of those things, all the, you know, the pencils and the, mm -hmm. you know, all these little gadgets and stuff. So that always amazed me how he could put that on paper. And, um, he had just a very unique way of like writing, even his handwriting is just very, very unique and super cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so that always like really amazed me at how like he could, you know, sketch things out yeah. and that his job actually incorporated that um that talent that he had and then my mother also um super creative um and she's where I kind of get that hospitality thing from uh -huh. um, she loves to entertain and so um I got that part from her but um she also is very creative I would watch her first of all she um was an administrative assistant for many years so she had um, the skill of doing shorthand, which uh, is just a very cool, like coding of like dictating and um, hearing a lot of dictation and having to jot down information, you know, a lot of information very quickly. So she has mm -hmm. a, a really cool skill of like writing shorthand. And then also she liked to doodle. So I would see her like, you know, do these little geometric shapes and kind of like doodle um, and like draw like an eye and things like that. So I started mimicking my mom um, and I'm not sure if I've ever even shared that with her, but I started oh. mimicking <laughs> my mom's drawing of an eye um, mm -hmm. and just started really just doing that over and over and over um, through all of, you know, like my young years and um, just realized how much I enjoyed just playing around with that. And just, you know, kind of when I get, got into high school, um, I started um, taking it a little bit more seriously and dabbling in other kinds of, you know, like painting and, mm -hmm. you know, learning the other aspects of it. But I definitely did um, kind of find that as a young, young girl uh, through just seeing my parents do it in, in different ways. So it's been yeah. super cool. Oh, that's awesome. So you come from a very creative family. It's definitely in your genes and something that the Lord gifted you with really young. I love that yeah. that's something that started to come alive in you when you were younger. Cause I know mm -hmm. oftentimes we'll have like these dream seeds and giftings and things that God has placed in us, but they never get awakened until we're older. And so that's mm -hmm. really awesome that it yeah. kind of started in your childhood. And mm -hmm. that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've really enjoyed it. It's just something that, you know, I, you know, um, just learning the different ways of being creative and, and realizing, you know, as I got older and grew up in church, realizing that um, talents come from the Lord and he's created us all in with certain talents and um, learning what those are is really, you know, exciting um, because mm -hmm. even though like, for example, artistic or creative talents, um, that doesn't mean that we all do them the same. We all have a okay. unique style. So I love how, you know, we, you know, people can have um, similar talents, but they're all, we're all um, suited with them in very unique ways. So I love mm -hmm. how that um, just allows us to express ourselves in that way. Yeah, I love that. That's so good. And all the diversity just points back to the Lord and how mm -hmm. he even created us. Our personalities are also different. Our giftings are different, but then also like our physical features and just everything. It's amazing all the thought and time and effort and energy that he's poured into handcrafting every single one of us. And so right. that's something that, um, you know, it's a topic that's really close to my heart um, with like what we titled the event tonight, Bought with a Price, knowing 
your value, knowing that the blood of Jesus has purchased you, knowing who you are in Christ. And that's something that I'm very passionate about is just spreading that message and drawing people back to knowing their royal identity in Christ and knowing how he sees them and his perspective. And so I thought it'd be really um, wonderful if we could talk about you growing up, like what your perspective was as yourself. Um, Because like self-image is obviously a huge topic and the way that we see ourselves affects so much and what's happening in our minds and our hearts. And so I'd love to hear what that was kind of like for you growing up. Did you have a healthy self-image or what was that like for you? I definitely um, struggled um, as a young girl with my self-image. You know, I, as I was growing up as a, as a young teen, Um, I, you know, had this hair that was just out of control all the time. So I had some, some years of really like saying, oh my gosh, you know, I cannot control this. Um, my skin started wanting to verbalize itself in different ways that I really did not embrace. (laughs) Um, I needed braces. Um, I have, um, this birthmark on my face that I, you know, was really questioning about liking that. So there was a lot of things about me that as a young teenager, I was like, um, I guess started withdrawing a lot and not, you know, really not minding just being the wallflower and kind of, you know, not wanting to draw attention to myself. That is so um, hard to imagine, like knowing your, <laughs> knowing you now, your personality. And I, and I have to say like, cause you know, we know as Christians, like testimony, the word of our testimony is very powerful. And so, you know, it's, it, it was a harsh time for me because I really, you know, the enemy really used those things to lie to me and say that I was, you know, ugly, um, that, you know, that this is, this was something that, you know, people focused on when they looked at me. Um, so it was very difficult, uh, be going through my teenage years, um, you know, just really in my mind feeling like I was being stared at for all the wrong Mm -hmm. reasons, you know, and that's really tough for, for young girls. And so, um, you know, that kind of really took me into, you know, a, a path of um, not knowing my true identity, Mm -hmm. um, allowing the enemy truly to toy with me uh, and, you know, leaving me very vulnerable in relationships. And so, you know, it really, um, unfortunately, because I did not have the knowledge at the time of uh, my true identity in the Lord, um, I was a Christian. I got saved nine years old um, in, in a Christian school. I was raised in a private school for, for most of my, my school years from like okay. second grade, from like second grade to like seventh grade. Um, I was in, my parents invested in my sister and I um, being, um, attending a private school, a Christian school. And so even though like I got saved very young and was getting the foundation, um, I, at the time I was not taught about identity and how (laughs) important it is to really coach and support girls and, and give them the tools they need through those very, what could be very tough and cruel years, um, of how the world, um, will quickly try to, um, you know, knock, knock a person down truly. (laughs) And, um, and really, um, the enemy really allowed that to play a huge, um, obstacle for me growing up. And so, you know, unfortunately, like I was mentioning, it, it put me in a vulnerable place where, you know, when someone gave me attention, I, you know, was like, you know, oh, wow, like, you know, like someone's, Mm -hmm. someone's noticing me. And, and so, you know, unfortunately, you know, the, that, that path also led to, to more um, lies from the enemy. And so, you know, I ended up settling for a relationship that did not glorify God. And, um, you know, opened me up, I opened myself up for not, first of all, seeking the Lord about was that truly, you know, the person that I should be spending time with, number one. Mm -hmm. Um, But 
also, you know, sub uh, subjecting myself to that, opening myself up to that, um, unfortunately, just took me down a path that was really, really difficult. Um, and as I look back now, as you know, a married woman with you know, beautiful children or, or beautiful young ladies now. Um, I, I truly can look back and, and be, and I'm so thankful that um, when I look back, I can truly see where God was there the whole time. You know, like the yeah. father was there the whole time. Um, mm -hmm. Even when I, you know, deliberately knew that I was in the wrong and, you know, and really a, this relationship like really truly started isolating me from like my family, my true mm -hmm. friends, um, totally changed um, me to be a even more withdrawn person, um, super insecure, totally stripped me of my self esteem. Um, I, I truly had to get to a place where I was desperate for mm -hmm. a rescue. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to be very sheer and very transparent tonight because that's the only way that people can really be ministered to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that vulnerable rock bottom place was where, you know, I, I basically was like, Lord, I have made a mess of this. And I am so sorry. Like, this is it. Here, here's myself completely broken you know, I don't know what you can do with it at this point, but you know, I give it to you. And, you know, that was the beginning of the Lord restoring um, and really revealing, redeeming, you know, all that the enemy thought he was going to, you know, um, you know, steal from me and destroy and, and say that I would never get it back. Mm -hmm. The father truly, you know, gave me back all that I thought I had lost, plus increase, like more than double portion, more than triple portion. Um, that is just how the father is, like unconditional love to the utmost degree <laughs> that <laughs> I'm just, you know, those of you that have got to know me in my latter years, you know, I know when I do share my testimony, people are truly surprised yeah. because he has done such a complete healing and restoration of my life that I, mm -hmm. I can't help but like tell people about it. Yeah. I can't help but tell people about it. Because we all sometimes are stuck in that place of like questioning, can I ever heal from this? Mm -hmm. Is there a way up from here? And like, I'm here as living proof to tell you absolutely yes. Yeah. But it is yeah. not, it's not obviously in our own strength. It is completely surrendering and yielding that thing. Um, and just saying, you know, like for me, it was like everything. It was like my complete life on, mm -hmm. on this platter of like shattered pieces mm -hmm. that I was like, Lord, I, I, I have nowhere to go from here. I have made a complete mess of what you blessed me with. And, I'm, and I only can say that I repent from living a life so that did not include you. And, you know, he's so wonderful that yeah. he truly, you know, picked me right up from that place. And like, as a father would, and as my earthly father has picked me up and truly dusted me off and was like, so intimate and personal on like, how we're going to, it's going to be okay. And we're going to make this all better. Yeah. And so it's just amazing how, you know, like where I am now today, I am 45 years old and feel like I'm still learning and growing and maturing because the Lord just has so much 
that he wants to mm -hmm. bless us with in every season of our lives yeah. that, you know, you know, I, I don't know who's on tonight, but no matter what age we are, no matter what season of life we're in, he is with us and wants us to feel in that present season, his love and his blessing in it that we don't have to wish for later or wish for tomorrow, that he is with us in the now and wanting to bless us right where we are, if we'll let him, so. Yeah, amen, that was, yeah, so beautiful. <laughs> As you guys can see, this is why I love Brenda. She's just so open and transparent. And like she said, God has done such a work in her life. And whenever I look at you, like, I just always think, like, beauty from ashes. Like, just your whole story reminds me of a princess and that heroic rescue and how God has just transformed and taken off those old rags and put on these robes of righteousness. And yes. you just emulate beauty just everywhere you go. Like, his beauty just comes out of you. And so you. it's just – it's all him. He gets all the glory. And I love that he's not a respecter of persons. If he right. did it for you, he will do it for those who are watching and That's those who watch the replay. And so he just mm -hmm. loves girls so much. Like it's ridiculous how much he loves us. <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, oh, and I can't, awesome. like, and I can't take any credit for anything at all. Like I, I mm -hmm. continually, you know, like how I have surrendered to him is truly like, I literally like said, I'm going to scoot over to the, um, to, to the other seat and let you direct me. Here's the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel seriously. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and like, I am going to be a, a partner with you and allow you to lead me and like be sensitive to, even when it feels uncomfortable, like I trust you completely. Mm -hmm. I trust you completely. Yeah. And I'm not changing my mind about that. So mm -hmm. it's just, you know, God is, truly amazing and um i'm just so thankful to be able to share that now so that i you know we can extend hope to others that may yeah. have areas that they feel um broken or or you know without hope or mm -hmm. you know like they feel like an area they're too ashamed of a certain area to really release it to him and and show him you know what they're truly going through so you know, my encouragement tonight would be, you know, if there's any area, like, you know, he already knows it anyway. So yeah. the best thing to do is just to be completely honest with him and release it to him so that he can free you. Mm -hmm. That's his desire yeah. is for us to be free in him and give him full reign over every aspect of our lives. Mm-hmm. Amen. So good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in that process of, you know, you have this story, you were over here and then God brought you over here. Obviously it didn't happen overnight. <laughs> like it was a process. It was a journey. And so I think that oftentimes, you know, we can read these scriptures and we can think about, okay, God, like I know I was bought with a price as bought by your blood and precious and valuable, but I, it hasn't sunk in as like reality yet. You know, it's just you're reading these truths and trying to refresh your heart in it and really hang on to what his word says. What was that journey sort of like for you? Um, I mean, were there any certain revelations that the Lord gave you where all of a sudden like you just understood or something sunk in or was it more of like a daily, you know, affirmations and reading his word and just allowing him to slowly over time? Or what was that like for you? I know everyone's process is different. Um, I definitely, um, had, had points where I knew what I had to do, but I would say that my pivot point, my turning point was, um, becoming a mom, mm -hmm. um, you know, having my daughter Renee and through my, you know, my decisions that I had made, you know, early on, it it put me in a position where I was now a single parent. Mm -hmm. And so the turning point for me was I was truly um, at the altar praying to the Lord about next steps. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, All right, Lord. Right. I was like, I was like, okay, this is, this is truly what's <laughs> happening. Let's be real. 
Um, <laughs> I'm a single parent and <laughs> like, I need your help. Like I had a wonderful family and awesome support. Um, they loved me through, they prayed me through, they had intercessors praying. I had, I had like 24 seven, like watchmen intercessors praying me through um, that season exactly. of my life. And so um, becoming a single parent, I truly in my mind kept replaying that word over and over and over, single parent, single parent, single mm -hmm. parent. And like, there was something about like, I needed to actually verbalize that to the Lord and like make it like a confession to like say, this is an area that I'm afraid of and I need to speak it out so that you can help me deal with it. Yeah. And so I truly was, you know, in my home church um, in Newark, New Jersey, Bethel, Assemblies of God, um, the same church that was my private school growing up. Oh, so wow. this altar, yeah. so this altar, okay, and this is, this is like an amazing part of how God has written my story. This altar was where I was at the age of nine years old, dedicated my life to the Lord. As a teenager, I was baptized mm -hmm. at this altar. Um, and now here I am, this, this was the same altar that I like for the first time ever received the Holy spirit. Mm -hmm. This is the altar now that I am having this pivotal moment. Wow. That's and so then cool. years, and then years later, I was going to be, um, dedicating my daughter, my first child, mm -hmm. Renee, dedicating yeah. her to the Lord at the same altar. And then years after that getting married oh my goodness wow <laughs> at this altar okay like truly that song come to the altar like it oh, was I... this was a, a a special place for me that I didn't realize till recently like maybe a year mm -hmm. or two wow. ago I didn't realize that at the cool. same altar the Lord had me go from like this season this season this season this season wow. this season <laughs> and so cool. I'm like, Lord, I mean, what a beautiful, beautiful place for him to reserve for me mm. to like have like these amazing life moments all happen like at the altar, at a place that represents sacrificial, like laying yeah. down of whatever the thing was at the moment. So I, I am truly blessed at that part that like the Lord really showed me years later that like that altar was like like my safe place at the time at all those times yeah and so like that moment um I got a little off track there but I got a little excited about my <laughs> right no just go for it um, okay. <laughs> but like that altar was you know again in this season me verbalizing a fear um that I had been processing like by myself alone. Like mm -hmm. I kept it so like in my head. And I, as I was praying at that altar that Sunday, right after church service, um, I truly had to, I felt prompted by the Lord to like, like just say it out loud, mm -hmm. yeah. say it out loud so that I can show you what I'm going to do with that. And I, I, I like really, got up the nerve and in my prayer, I verbalized it and said, Lord, I submit to you that I am now a single parent and I trust you completely on how you are going to be my husband. Mm -hmm. You are going to be my daughter's father and we're going to do this together and you're going to show me what to do because I am, I am at a loss. I, I mean, I've been very real with the Lord uh, since that moment, like just saying, yeah. basically, you've seen what I've done <laughs> with things <laughs> up until now. So I, I am, I leave you completely in control now. I'm not doing, I'm not taking control anymore. And so truly yeah. in that moment, I said the words out loud. I acknowledge that I'm now a single parent, father, you know, be, be what I need in this moment and show me your way for me and Renee. Um, and so literally I got up from the altar 
And those of you who know me, like I have had a few little tearing here, but I am an emotional, very sensitive um, person. And I've learned recently that emotions are a gift from the Lord, as long as I don't let them um, steer, steer me and be my filter for things. Mm -hmm. um, so I have embraced yeah. the fact that the Lord has allowed me to, you know, sometimes, you know, be very transparent with people in showing my tears. Um, but like, I literally got up from that altar, snotty nosed, teary face mess. <laughs> Yeah. And that was the moment that my husband, Raymond, who at the time we were just friends, um, uh -huh. asked me out on a date. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so the Lord has a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. He truly was like, oh, so if you think you don't look good right now, <laughs> guess what? someone's going to ask you out on a date. So I was like, oh, that's oh my great. gosh, this is not <laughs> happening right now. Um, so, you know, that um, basically was the beginning of Raymond and I um, truly um, committing to each other. And, you know, again, the Lord was amazing because here I am saying, well, no, no man is really going to want an instant family. Um, so the Lord just eliminated that right away as soon as i yeah. as soon as i released that fear that i had he said i'm taking care of that and he presented me with that right away in that moment so um yeah i mean the lord is amazing uh if you all don't know that like, <laughs> give him an opportunity in something that you yes. feel like you've screwed up and he will truly prove to you that he can turn it around for his glory so it's just Amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. So good. Oh, I love it. I'm just sitting over here grinning. I'm just like, oh, where'd we go from here? That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, before, as we were preparing for this and just praying into it, I had a scripture that was on my heart, and I wrote it down so that I didn't mess up quoting it for you guys. And it is 1 Corinthians um, 6, 19, and 20. And that scripture says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, but you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body. And this scripture, I love it. I mean, there's so much we could say about it. But as we were talking before, um, a couple weeks ago, you had mentioned that this verse has really been resonating with you lately and just knowing um, you know, obviously that everything that you've been saying already, that we are so loved by him, that he takes all the messes and he turns them into beauty and um, all of that, and that we're bought with a price, but that our bodies are not our own and that we are his temple. And like I said, there's so much we could say about that. So I guess just whatever is on your heart um, from that scripture and anything you want to share as to how that's been resonating with you. Well, um, I, I'll tell you this, um, and I, I was prepared too so that we could read it. I put a heart around it. I don't know if you all can see it, my heart. <laughs> um, but uh, this truly is a, um, a scripture that resonated with me as, as an adult trying to now um, put all the pieces of my life together in a way that honors God. Um, I truly felt like you know, the Lord was showing me that like our life is like a puzzle. And so I like to be very interactive. So I got this puzzle box here. You got right? a puzzle. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So um, like truly our life is like a puzzle. Like there's so many pieces and parts. And like, as you can see, like a lot of pieces, right? And I mean, these pieces can rep represent so many things. But like, for example, this one, I'm not even sure how many pieces, a thousand pieces. Okay. Um, so like I started, like the Lord started really ministering to me about like, your life is like a puzzle. Like this journey mm -hmm. is like a puzzle and you just, you know, take your time and you're, you're seeing how all the pieces fit together. Um, and of course the pieces can be, you know, relationships and all kinds of, of things. So, um, but like one thing that he started showing me is like, and I, and I'm going to show you like an example, like, so this piece right here, um, for me was like salvation. Okay. 
So click, put that into the puzzle piece, right? And so upon being saved, like now what was my next piece of my puzzle? Like I needed to get into the <laughs> word. So I have this little piece here that represents like getting into the scripture and like, you know, yeah. really learning, like, what does this walk with you look like? Mm -hmm. What, what are you saying to me? Well, he's given us his word, like his manuscript that I can read anytime I want to. So like, I had to click this in there and say, mm -hmm. all right, I have, I have like, I've got the salvation. Now I've put together the word and, and then learning now how to develop like my communication with now my, my father. So, mm -hmm. um, prayer, had, had another piece that represents prayer and clicking that into there. And so as I started, you know, like realizing like, wow, you know, there's like so many pieces to this life that, you know, um, I want to enjoy it. I want, I want to like, you know how that you have that, if you, if any of you have ever put a puzzle together, like you sit there and you, and you see, you see like in your mind, you see like the model of what you think it might, it should look like, mm -hmm. but truly there has to be this process of like, you know, finding all the pieces that fit. Yeah. Not us like jamming something in <laughs> because we're like, oh, well, this is cute. Like I want this to fit, in. <laughs> but truly finding yeah. the pieces that fit to what my life is already ordered and I don't say ordered in like a controlling way, but yeah. like there is a map, like the Lord has given us a blueprint, a very beautiful blueprint of like, you know, this is what Livy Lynn's life is going to look like. And I know yours is going to be like a Disney princess castle. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, but like truly we all have been created in such a unique way that, you know, we all have these individual pieces, like my piece of my puzzle is not going to fit in yours. Like mm -hmm. I can't try to force something that does not belong right. to me yeah. or is not part of my story. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so another piece that I had to learn was, you know, wisdom and asking the Lord for wisdom, um, you know, walking out this now newfound journey of being a young parent um, now being a newlywed, um, partnering on, in all of these different components of how now I was going to begin my hashtag adulting life. I needed like wisdom. I was like, Lord, I don't know how to do this. So <laughs> can you please, can you please, 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 I need like a download of wisdom. And so, you know, click, put that into the puzzle. And then, um, realizing that now that I've been healing from this, you know, dark season in my life, mm -hmm. the Lord was now like opening me up to be the person, the, the personality and the character like him that just really loves people, loves relationships, loves connecting. And so I had to learn very quickly, like, okay, now that you're you're connecting me with people and allowing me to now start having healthy relationships. Um, I started talking a lot, like, I was just <laughs> like, you know, chatterbox, chatterbox. And so I needed to now start learning how to listen. So listening is another piece that I had to truly, um, you know, kind of take a step back and say, Lord, you know, mm -hmm. I, I love connecting with people, but I also, you know, want to make sure that I'm a good listener. And as I asked him for wisdom, um, you know, sharing my testimony with others, I wanted to always be um, listening to his heart, not just mm -hmm. for myself, but for yeah. others. And mm -hmm. so coming from a place that was so broken and that I saw him put the pieces back together, like I was so very, like, very sensitive to the Holy Spirit on when like I saw a person and I could tell that there was mm -hmm. something that yeah. they needed encouragement on. And so mm -hmm. learning how to really take time to listen and, you know, as the Lord directed me to meet people and, and ask him like, 
Lord, what is this, what is this connection about? What is it yeah. that, you know, you would have me speak into um, this, this divine appointment that you've entrusted to me? Mm -hmm. And so learning how to listen was another component and then also obeying him. Yeah. You know, because obviously we all know that um, when we feel prompted to do something by the Lord, um, it feels uncomfortable. And like I did yesterday, a live, a Facebook live that he was like, hey, hop on and do that live. And I was like, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so doing that, um, you know, mm -hmm. doing things that are uncomfortable um, sometimes, but it's obeying him and knowing that something amazing is going to come out of it, even yeah. if it's not for you directly. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's going to bless someone like, you know, you have yeah. to do it. And so learning to obey was just another little puzzle, puzzle piece. Um, and so I guess the, what I'm leading up to is that this verse um, in 1 Corinthians 6, um, 19, do you know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And so, like, I was feeling like there was still some pieces that were missing out of me <laughs> wanting to be a good steward of, like, all that God was entrusting to me. And I realized, you know, that my health, you know, how I was eating and drinking, you know, that's a component that mm -hmm. I was really lacking in. And so um, I, I realized that, you know, health and my body was another piece of that puzzle that I was still yeah. you know, missing. And so, um, you know, that is, that is something that, you know, the Lord, again, divine appointment, he connected me with our amazing team leader, Danielle who has just been a wonderful, wonderful mentor to me. Um, and, you know, the whole Ignited Hearts community has just been a beautiful, safe place for me to grow and, and really um, mature in the areas that, you know, need to be kind of revealed on where I, where Father wants to, you know, help me to do better. Mm -hmm. And so that verse truly, you know, um, revealed to me that I had, I had some work to do on some area still submitting to him in that way. And what, did, what did that mean? What was that going to look like, um, for me to surrender, not just my mindset and my spirit and my soul and my will and emotions, but now allowing that to, um, also, um, envelop my physical body as well. And so that is when I um, was introduced to our nutrition and, you know, started incorporating that into my body and saying, Lord, you know, I tried to do this clean eating thing on my own and I don't know why it hasn't been working, but, you know, divine appointments, met Danielle and met you and, and so many others that were doing it and just allowing him to, to really open up my eyes through nutrition was like something that I was not anticipating, was not expecting yeah. at all. Um, but truly I felt like once I started being consistent with that and um, really making it a prayer, like, Lord, my, my desire is to give you my best. And I desire to, in everything that you've entrusted to me, I desire to take care of it the best way that I can. So if you will equip me with the tools that I need to do that, I want to honor you across the board in every aspect yeah. of my life. I want to give you the best. And so, um, you know, like I just said before, I was trying to eat better. I had for mm -hmm. about two years stopped mm -hmm. eating um, red meats I was like just focusing more on fish and things like that. Yeah. Um, but I, I was, I still was kind of feeling very blah. Like there was mm -hmm. like excitement in it. 
I was like, there has to be more. Yeah. <laughs> there has to be more. This cannot right. be it. Just ask anyone who's ever done a diet. Like there's got to be a better yes. way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, sure. it kind of like, you know, truly just opened my eyes up to like, okay, something just clicked. Mm -hmm. Like a light switch went on with pure nutrition. And I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be salesy at all <laughs> from my heart. And this is like my testimony of like yes. another puzzle piece that mm -hmm. completely clicked right, right into place and, yeah. you know, really allowed me to see things in a different way. Um, because now, I mean, this opportunity of me just wanting to take better care of myself and my family mm -hmm. now has opened me up to having, you know, my own business that I never yeah. I mean, I thought of other ideas that I'd have my own business, but it never was about wellness and mm -hmm. nutrition at all. Um, that was right. completely off the radar, but the Lord, um, completely like broke off, like a lot of like fear of man. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> because I was like, I started this and like, was so excited about it. Like when you share like about, you know, you read a, an awesome book, um, or, you know, went to an amazing restaurant or whatever, um, you want to like tell somebody about yeah. it. And uh -huh. um, I was like, so like afraid of rejection, like that people mm -hmm. were going to be like, oh, here she comes with a sales <laughs> pitch. And I was like, I truly had to like, ask the Lord to help me through that because yeah. I never joined it with the intention of like sharing it with anyone. I, mm -hmm. I was like, this is what I'm going to do by myself. Yeah. You know, me and Raymond are going to do this. Um, and I never thought that I would be so ignited by it. Right. Yeah. That I was going to be like, oh my gosh, everyone needs to do this <laughs> and like at least try it. Um, yeah. so I, I was really like amazed at how the Lord was healing me again in an area that I didn't even realize that I needed healing. Mm. Yeah. And, and it healed me in more ways than just my physical body. Mm. Um, and it was because I saw in the word about like honoring him with everything. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I just, I've been so blessed to be able to um, have that piece of my life, um, you know, unfold in such a beautiful way. Um, mm -hmm. I've been doing that since 2017. Uh, but this year, this during this pandemic, when I was, you know, home during furlough and first it was like reduction of hours, then it was um, furlough for a time period, then it was um, lost my job, then it was like had the opportunity to possibly get my job back. I had a lot of time at home mm -hmm. that I was like, you know what, Lord, you gave me this opportunity um, to make this a financial freedom for myself as well, not just physical and health type freedom, but also to, for me to have my own business. Like, why am I not, you know, trusting you with this opportunity and mm, seeing yeah. what you have for me in this? And so, you know, through Danielle and our, you know, Ignite Your Day um, Zoom calls and Team Ignite Zoom calls, like I was really, really getting amazing discipleship mm -hmm. that has really helped me to um, realize that if I expected from God, you know, I was going to have to put some skin in the game mm. Yeah, and not be afraid about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not be afraid about it. So I, I truly had to, you know, go through some, Sorry, I have people sending me messages. <laughs> um, I had to truly, um, you know, go through some self-evaluation um, within our very safe communities that we have through Ignited Hearts and, yeah. you know, Team Ignite that I, you know, had some amazing sisters in the Lord, like yourself, that we've been, we've been going through these growth things together. Oh, for and, sure. And yeah. really encouraging each other and motivating each other that, like, I see a spark in you. Like, you know, 
bring it, you know, mm -hmm. and just, you know, having different challenges like Danielle, you know, asking us to do, you know, whether it's a Facebook live or, um, whatever it may be. Yeah. Just getting um, out of your comfort zone. Exactly. <laughs> getting out of the comfort zone and just saying, you know, what if, like, mm -hmm. what if I could break this, like, fear of man, you know, yeah. you know, and, and the Lord was like, I absolutely want to, if you will verbalize it to me and admit mm -hmm. that it is holding you back, I will absolutely break that off. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's been an uncomfortable process <laughs> but you know what i'd rather be uncomfortable and grow yeah. mm -hmm. and like let him bust doors of opportunity open yeah. amen than to stay mm -hmm. in a cage you know like yeah. stay in a cage where when we're supposed to be free like we yeah. got people like we're supposed to be a testimony of freedom and, you know, abundant life, like we hear, you know, through Ignited Hearts, abundant life is not me settling for mediocrity. Mm -hmm. It is like, it is like taking those dreams off the shelf that he's placed inside and saying, okay, this is, this is bigger than me. But if you've placed that desire or that passion or that talent within me, you know, I give it right back to you and say, yes, I'm all in. Yeah. What, what do you want me to do with this? And, mm -hmm. you know, like you, I mean, you have like amazing, since day one that I met you, like you are an amazing and beautiful dreamer, but you don't stay in that dream phase. Like yeah. you put you know, your faith to action. And I guess my encouragement to anybody that's listening is like, don't wait to put your faith to action. Mm -hmm. You will be so surprised when, when you like, you know, step outside of your comfort zone and like with one step of faith, like God will blow your mind. He will blow yeah. your mind. Like, <laughs> so I truly, true. I truly, and I'm, again, I'm going to be super sheer and transparent. Last night, I struggled to press that Facebook Live button for 30 minutes. <laughs> it's okay. 30 it's minutes. relatable. We've all been there. We've all 30, been there. 30 minutes, people. It took me to press that Facebook Live button. Why? Like, why? It's just the silliest thing ever. But I, I say that because, like, we all have something that, you know, prevents us from getting into that next level with him, you know, taking mm -hmm. that next step, mm -hmm. step up, yeah. and, you know, accelerating and, and allowing him to, to work through us. Like if we're a vessel, mm -hmm. but we're not allowing ourselves, we're not making ourselves available. Like he can't do it. And that's yeah. what he wants to do is to um, take our lives and like totally like show off through us, but we have to give him permission. We have mm -hmm. to, you know, he is a gentleman. He will never force, you know, yeah. his way um, on us or through us. And so he's simply waiting for us to, you know, be transparent and say, Lord, here's an area, here's yet another area mm -hmm. that, I feel you're leading me in this way and I don't know what it will look like, but I'm going to take that step of faith. I'm going to take that first step with you, knowing that you're with me the whole time. And I can't wait to see what is going to come of this. Yeah. And I will give you all the credit for it. Mm -hmm. And so I guess another verse that really has resonated with me and has been kind of like my, like when I'm in a tough spot, <laughs> I like throw the promises back at the Lord and say, you said, yep. <laughs> you said that your strength is made perfect in my weakness. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I truly like have had a lot of weakness and I get excited to say that because it just puts it back on him mm -hmm. to be the one that determines the outcome. Yeah. It is mm -hmm. not me at all. And it's like, whenever I'm weak, I get excited because I know that he's going to do something yeah. because he likes to use, 
you know, situations where people don't expect anything from Brenda. Like, eh, you know, she's, she's just from New Jersey. Like she's not going to do anything. Um, and like, you know, like I totally give that over to God and say, Lord, you know, I, I'm kind of nervous about this or that, but like, I know that if I submit to you, you're going to, um, do a, a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and I don't want my creation of my life. I don't want my version or what yeah. I okay. concoct to be the ideal life mm -hmm. for Brenda. Like I want, like, I want your amazing, yeah. your amazing, 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 full abundant life story for, for little old me. Like I, I want to like forever be like a humble yielded, like, this is not about me, Lord. This is about your mm -hmm. will, your kingdom come, your will be done through me. And that's it. Yeah. Well, Let that be like yeah. all of our prayers because mm -hmm. there's no other way for us to really enjoy life. Yeah. Any, anything yeah. else, any other mindset is truly a, a trap. Yeah, of the enemy so to true. steal away from us what what God has in store. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, so good. Oh my goodness, thank you for sharing all of that. I love yes. your puzzle piece analogy. Like that's that's so good because I mean I'm I'm a storyteller. I love stories. I love process. I love how God does like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and He just keeps mm -hmm. building on it. He continually right. builds, and if we're patient enough he's going to write a beautiful ending. It's going to happen. We're going to get there. And so we don't have to be discouraged by the highs and lows and ups and downs because he's writing his story. If we just keep giving him the pen and surrendering, he's going to do it. And so yeah. I love that your example of your little puzzle pieces, it shows that that's what he's doing in all of our lives. And so I also love that um, you mentioned that everyone's puzzle pieces aren't the same and that what God's doing in us is not necessarily going to look the same in other people's lives. And so I think that it's interesting too, when we talk about like our team Ignite and our wonderful Danielle, you guys hear us talk about her all the time because she's such an amazing leader and we love yeah. her. We love our team and our community and the superfood nutrition that God has blessed us with. Like we just get so excited about it. And um, but at the same time, we know that it's not for everyone. And we know that the path that God's given us is not, what everyone else is going to hop on board and be like, yeah, I want to build a business. Let's do this. But for some people it is. And it's so cool to see that when God stirs that in other people, those are the people he connects us with and brings us together. And even for those that are like, Oh, I'm so inspired by your story. I don't really feel like this is for me, but I love hearing about it. Like even those people can be encouraged as well. And so like right. he is just, he's so multifaceted. It's incredible. He's just so good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so, yeah. So I don't even know. It's hard to know where to go from here be just because <laughs> you have shared so many good nuggets, so much good stuff. I was over here like, oh my goodness, I need to be taking notes. Like this has been such a blessing <laughs> just to hear your heart. And, you know, just you're talking about being a yielded vessel. And when we have our hands like this, we're not going to get very far, but just always having our open hands and giving it to him and just watching and seeing what he does with it. And so um, I'm getting the warning from Instagram, the infamous warning that says that we have a minute and 51 seconds left. So sadly, that means we're going to have to wrap things up. But um, wow, it's been such a blessing. So I guess maybe before we go, um, we just want to offer an invitation for anyone who's listening or watching the replay. If you are feeling something in your heart, in your spirit, that you're like, oh my goodness, this health puzzle piece is something that God's been talking to me about. This is something that I want to learn more about and see what this is um, all about. So we would be more than happy to share um, what God has done, kind of our testimonies with the superfood. If you're interested, feel free to reach out to me or to Brenda. Um, we'd love to chat about that. Um, and also, 
you know, beyond that, if you are hearing Brenda's story of how God has put this business in her lap and how she wasn't expecting, um, I've always known that Brenda's a Proverbs 31 woman, but she wasn't expecting it to play out in this way quite exactly. If you're feeling something in your heart um, for that as well, for building a business, a kingdom business, please feel free to reach out. We'd be so excited to have you in Team Ignite. Um, God is doing so many amazing things in our group and our community. And so we're always here. Reach out. We love you guys. We are praying for you. And um, any last words, Brenda? You've got 36 seconds. <laughs> 36 seconds. I just want to encourage you, um, all that are listening and will listen to the replay, like you need to be in a group that is safe and, uh, and have accountability partners and mentors that are speaking into your life. So that mm -hmm. if you don't have that, we have yeah. a group. It's life-changing. It really is. Like, it really it's is. just, we can't even begin to explain what God's done yes. for me personally and for you. It's been incredible. Well, thank you, Brenda. We love yes, you so much. My pleasure. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. Thank you all for connecting. We love you all and praying for you. Bye.